Welcome to this Windows channel and this is another video in our security privacy settings and uh, issues of web browsers. Today we are uh, starting with Google Chrome and we'll be doing pretty much all the browsers, the popular browsers. If you have a specific browser we did not do a video in the next week or so, then uh, let us know and we'll uh, check it out. So Google Chrome. Um, is the most popular browser, so that's why we're starting with this. It has many security and privacy settings that you can tweak. And if you open your Google Chrome, go into your little hamburger menu. On the upper right of the screen, you have uh, the hamburger menu that you can click. It's the little three bars. Go into the settings, and here you will go down to show advanced settings just below the default browser. Here you have the privacy settings that show up. There's um, use web services to resolve navigation errors, use prediction services to help complete searches. These are Potential privacy risks for a simple reason. It means that it uses the Google Cloud services to actually check for, uh, for example, if you misspell a URL when you're going to a website. Uh, also, autocomplete stuff for you because it knows, oh, this is where you want to go. It also means that it's checking what you're doing. So it could have potential privacy issues because it technically means that it's checking all the websites that you're going to. Uh, so depending on how um, you want to see the privacy settings in Google Chrome and Google, you might want to check, you know, take the check marks off and um, make sure that you know less and less of Google is actually checking what you're doing. Uh, Prefetch resources to load pages more quickly, meaning that it can download uh, pictures, files, and stuff uh, for usage. Um, you know, it will download a picture, for example, of a website that you go to often because it's always the same. It takes less time than downloading the picture every time, stuff like that. Um, if you want to, you know, you can remove this check mark, um, meaning that sometimes the web can be a little slower. It depends on your usage. Uh, automatically report details of possible security incidents. Once again, the check mark is off because it is a privacy issue in a sense that. If you put the check mark and your browser has a security problem with a website, it means that it knows which website probably that you went to, the security issue with it. It means, you know, and if you're logged in, that's probably one of the things. If you're logged in with a Gmail account to sync everything like me, um, up to what point all of that information is linked to you is not clear. Uh, protect you and your device from dangerous sites. Once again, it means that Google Cloud services are scanning for uh, dangerous sites. It's a good thing because it means that you get that red page that says, oh, this site is dangerous. And, you know, technically it is something good, but it does mean on the privacy side that, once again, Google is scanning what you're doing, basically. Using a web service to help resolve spelling errors, once again, that would have a privacy impl implication because of uh, being checking all the time for spelling. Um, but, you know, it, it, it all depends on where you are. You know, I would personally not have any problems and um, use web service to help resolve spelling. I don't really, I'm not really scared in putting a check mark and automatically report details of possible security incidents. But um, it is, you know, the thin line of privacy is here. Up to what point we are still anonymous in private here. Automatically send usage statistics and crash reports to Google. Uh, this, once again, is like telemetry in Windows 10. The difference here, you have an on-off switch. It's not a, uh, well, we'll just change the level. So if you're, you know, scared of what can be sent, because you're not really sure, you can take off the check mark. But this is, of course, always interesting because it um, really makes um, you know your browser better as they use these statistics to improve Google Chrome. Send a do not track request with your browsing traffic. 
Now, this is nice because it means that it goes when you go to a website, it's going to say, oh, please don't track me. But that's just a polite thing. It means it's asking the site, don't track me. But the website, if it does want to track you, it still tracks you. It's not blocking tracking. It's only requesting do not track. So if a website doesn't, you know, uh, obey that do not track, it doesn't change anything. Uh, but you can put it on and, you know, less some of the websites that want to have the do not track on will obey this. Uh, it depends on the website you visit. The important thing, passwords and forms here. Enable autofill to web uh, forms and uh, offer save your password. You should have offer to save your web passwords off. This should be off. That's for sure. Don't have Google ask you to save your passwords. Uh, that's very important. And um, uh, enable autofill. Of course, the best would be to have um, the best would be to have all of that off because it means that nothing would be saved to the cloud, especially if you're using the Google services. Nothing will be saved on local on your computer. Uh, and it really makes it more secure that nothing of your personal info of, you know, all the forms on the web are not filled out automatically. But the most important is especially the, the, the passwords. Don't offer to save the web passwords. Um, that would be the best. Of course, it has to offer, so you can still say no if you keep it on. In privacy, of course, you have content settings. You can check content settings. Cookies, a lot of cookies are blocked. Once again, if you lock cookies, a lot of websites are broken. But you can manage exceptions. You know, the best thing would be to manage exceptions to the websites. So, for example, block cookies, but allow ma manage exceptions of what sites you want to add, have cookies working. Show images or not, this is not much of a privacy problem today or a security problem. Uh, but um, I would take this more as of a, um, if you have a very slow internet connection, you turn off the images and it means that websites won't have these images download. Um, the security problem of images comes from the fact that uh, there was a point where some pictures could have been um, infected in a way to run a kind of a script and infect a computer. But if you're always up to date on your browser and your settings and your operating systems, this is a minimal risk. JavaScript, allow or not, of course, allowing JavaScript means all these websites work well. Blocking it means it's a little complicated. Um, but you can, once again, manage exceptions. Say, well, I want won't run JavaScript, but if I see a website that's broken that I visit all the time, you can manage an exception for that website and have it run only there. That's something else. You know, there's a problem with, uh, the biggest problem with these settings is how to manage a um, kind of a, uh, a, a way of not breaking everything on the web and still saying, staying pretty secure and private. Um, the default settings for the most part are a little bit on that line. They're kind of in, on the line of, you know, halfway between privacy security, halfway between functionality. Uh, and the biggest problem would, you know, the biggest thing probably that we could do is tell websites what we don't want websites to do. I think the biggest problems with these settings is not the settings or Google Chrome, but Maybe just the fact that websites track us without letting us know. That's always kind of the problem. There should be a consent on pretty much every website that says, oh, here you're going to be tracked. Do you want to be tracked? Yes or no. That would be the fair way to do it more than in a browser where you can actually block most of these things. Handlers, that means that um, you know a website can require a certain protocol on your um, Google Chrome browser. There's a lot of protocols that make different uh, parts of the web function and a website can ask to become default, you know, um, handlers for a protocol if there's something happening. 
Uh, this usually will leave at allow sites to ask. And once again, it's very important because in Google Chrome, what's nice is that a lot of the settings is ask. That means it's not turned on by default. It asks what you want to do. Plugins, detect and run important plugins means it will run the plugins on websites that it knows that it's okay. Um, but you can also choose plugin content. This has a security issue mostly, more than a privacy issue. But it does have a privacy issue depending on the plugin. But the number one thing here with plugins is the security issue. Um, malicious websites can use plugins to infect your computer, especially plugins that are not up to date, like Flash. So um, here it's you know you can let me choose if you want, uh, which means that when you go to a website, it's going to have to ask you, okay, I want to run this plugin. Problem here is a lot of websites you're going to go crazy with the number of requests of plugins, uh, but um, this has very uh, pretty interesting security. Um, concern because of the plugin, the nature of the, the plugins. Pop-ups. There's every browser has a pop-up blocker. And you know what? If there's I do get requests of people saying, Oh, I want to have a you know an ad blocker because I get pop-ups. Well I'm sorry, but all the pop-ups that I've seen are on websites that are not good websites. Porn, um what else? Uh, you also have uh, torrents, stuff like that. Um, you know, most of you that tell me I got pop-ups, well, you probably go to websites you shouldn't go, and you're maybe infected also. I've seen a lot of computers with pop-ups simply because they're infected, and the pop-ups won't be blocked by a pop-up blocker, and it won't even be blocked by an ad block because they are of a different nature. They pop a window that is completely separate. It's not a pop-up from the main window or the main website you're actually looking at. So, uh, you know, <laughs> pop-up blockers in most web, web browsers are fine and work really well. So, of course, you don't want to have any sites to show pop-up. The exceptions here, by the way, I've seen that a few times. People go to a website, they click, they want to say, um, you know, have a form that they'll uh, answer and um, that form um, is a pop-up window so they don't see it and they don't understand every time they click they don't have the form show up uh, that happens less and less but it does still happen sometimes so you might want to manage an exception for a website for example that has that types of feature location ask for your location you can of course shut it off by say do not track any site do not allow any site to track your physical location, meaning that the website will not be able to see where you are. The implications, some people will say, oh, I don't care. I don't want websites to know where I am. Yeah, but have you ever gone to your favorite weather channel website and it knows where you are? Well, that's because it can ask where you are. Once again, you know, this is an ask. So it means that if a website you've never visited wants to track where you are, it's going to ask you and you have the possibility to say no. So you can always manage like that. And I think that's a nice security, a nice way to keep secure because it's going to ask for it. Notifications, same thing. If a website wants to send notifications about something, it's going to ask for. Full screen, it's websites that want to be full screen. Uh, an exception you might want or might have here is YouTube. But it's going to say, when you go full screen on Google Chrome, it's going to say, oh, you want to go full screen? And you, you click OK. And once you do that once, it adds that exception here in full screen. Manage mouse cursor. Uh, this is uh, for websites that can modify the mouse cursor for different functionalities. Uh, an example, a website that doesn't want to get its picture stolen will disable the right click and save picture because it doesn't want you to steal the content. You can of course say do not allow any site to disable the mouse cursor, meaning it disables all of these functionalities. Um, you know, websites usually use that mostly to um, prevent people from stealing some content or maybe add a functionality to the mouse that's not there usually, maybe a, a PC, a computer game online for example. 
uh, protected content. That means that um, special content can actually need to ID you, need to know who you are. An example, if you go on the web on Netflix, it needs to know who you are because it needs to make sure you are the person that subscribes to Netflix. It has a privacy issue in the sense that it has to know who you are, but it also means that um, you know it, you can't bypass this if you really want to use some of these web services sometimes. Um, so that is um, the way things are. If you're not subscribing to anything and specific anything to anything, you can of course turn it on and see if uh, you know what it's doing. Microsoft and camera, you can, you know, if you don't use never your microphone or your camera, you can turn this off. Do not allow any sites to access microphone or your camera. That means that, you know, if you're scared that you might be filmed or recorded without your knowledge, well, it can't. If you just do not allow sites to access, it means no website will be able to access. Uh, once again here it's a ask so it means that if a website wants to try to use your camera or your microphone it will ask for permission to do so so depending on how you use your computer but um, you know what I, I know that more than three quarters of the people that I've seen uh, never use their camera and the microphone so you can turn it off but remember you did that if for some reason someday you go to a website that requires that Unsandbox plugin access. That means that a, a, a plugin can have an access outside of uh, a controlled area. Sandboxing means that a script or a plugin might be working from, uh, you know, within a, a prison, basically. Uh, that is the thing here. It works with, within a prison. Um, by allowing Unsandbox, it means that a plugin, like say Flash, for example, that wants to access your camera or microphone, can go outside. It becomes a security risk. But once again, here it's going to ask for that permission and you can deny it. But you can also say, don't allow anyone to do so. Automatic downloads, meaning that websites that want to download some stuff can download automatically. But here is an ask, so it means that it doesn't do it automatically. It's going to ask for you can, of course, say do not allow any sites to download multiple files. MIDI full control, that's for music stuff. MIDI is a musical instrument device uh, stuff. And uh, so ask when you have full control. Not much security implications, I think, here. And finally, zoom levels, where you can manage the different zoom levels of different websites. So that's pretty much the tour of all the privacy and security settings with my comments and observations on them. And so you can, of course, apply that knowledge and decide what you want to do about it. If you have uh, any comments, questions, problems, why not ask away? We'll try to help you. If you have a, um, if you like our videos, why not give us thumbs up? It's going to really, uh, you know, help us in the ratings on YouTube. You can subscribe to our channel. It's gonna also you're gonna know when our videos are online, and hopefully you enjoy our videos and take a look at our other videos. If you're not using Chrome, we'll have all the major browser security uh, features.